Good morning to a what was wet and cold but now slightly sunny Yerevan in Armenia under the shadows of their opera house. Now Yerevan might be the modern capital of Armenia but it dates its history back to the 8th century BC making it one of the oldest continually inhabited cities in the world. And a Yerevan, like Armenia, has swung backwards and forwards between independence and under the control of somebody. And I suppose the most recent example or recent history starts in 1828 with the Russo-Turkish War when Turkey handed over control of Armenia to the Russian Empire. In 1918, with the Bolshevik Revolution, the Armenians declared the First Republic and started immediately another war with Turkey, which resulted in the Armenian Genocide by the Turks. In 1920, with the help of Stalin, Armenia came uh, under the auspices of the new Soviet Union and became the Armenian Socialist Soviet Republic. During that process, the district of Nagorno-Karabakh was given as an independent oblast by Stalin to Azerbaijan. That situation stayed more or less the same until 1991, the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the declaration of independence for Armenia. And in five days time, they celebrate their 25th anniversary. But conflict remains. The problem with Nagorno-Karabakh remains. And there's a lot of history right throughout Armenia. So let's do a little bit of a tour. Let's leave Ye Yerevan. Let's go to the rest of the country and take a historical tour of Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh. Did you know that Armenia is the first country in the world to have adopted Christianity as its formal religion? And Armenia, history is measured in millennia, not years. I'm standing at the foothills of Mount Ararat that used to be part of Greater Armenia, but is now in Turkey. And Mount Ararat is where, of course, Noah's Ark supposedly landed after the Great Flood, sailing all the way from what is Yemen to, well, what's now Turkey. but the soul and heart of Armenian culture. And we're about to go to that monastery over there back in the year 301. And let me tell you a little story. Saint Gregory the Illuminator was tiddly bopping around the world trying to convince people to convert to Christianity. And he came across the king in Armenia. And he didn't like the idea. They were, they were pagans, busy fighting the Persians just across the border who were Zoroastrians. So he tossed uh, Gregory down into the dungeon. I'm here 20 metres underground in Korovira. Korovira literally means deep well, and I'm at the very bottom of this deep well. This is where uh, Gregory the Illuminator was thrown for 13 years by King Trevat III back in around about the year 290 odd. Ben fell ill and his sister had a number of dreams saying the only way he could be cured is by St. Gregory. So St. Gregory the Illuminator was brought up from deep in this dungeon, cured the king, and in return, the king converted the entire country to Christianity, which is why Armenia is the first country in the world to adopt Christianity as its state religion in the year 301. With such a long Christian history, it's not a surprise when you see that Armenia has so many old wonderful churches here. Now, Butalashen Monastery, this complex here at one stage housed 500 monks and religious personnel. It uh, was built around the 12th and 13th century with the oldest construction here, a ruin being the 10th century. And the monks here were able to negotiate with the Mongolians when they invaded a tax exemption to not have to pay a Mongolian tax. Hence why buildings like this that were in place when the Mongolians invaded still stand today. Okay, here at Butalashen, one of the things that is really incredible about this facility is how detailed it is. And you see right through the place a whole lot of uh, cross stones with intricate carving and often called lace cross stones. If you have a look at the back wall of this main church, this main chapel, it tells the story of Jesus Christ. You've got up the top, you've got the eagle holding a sheep in its talons with arrows pointing down with the cross uh, symbolizing the world on the corner coming down through the heavens and down to the earth. And then back again after Christ dies, the arrow points back up again. So this whole story on the back of the church is well thought out to retell again the story of Jesus coming down to earth and ascending back to the heavens after death nearly a thousand years old. I'm inside a caravanista which was built back in the days of the Silk Road. 
So when people would go along the Silk Road and need a place to stay overnight, they'd often come to monasteries like this one at Tatev in Armenia. And what they'd do is they'd come into this single vaulted building. They would tie their animals up here where they have feed placed in that little niche and they would sleep with their animals and their goods here, both of which were incredibly valuable. So this is pretty much exactly as it would have been in the 1100s, 1200s, 1300s. This one, Tatyev Monastery, was actually built in the 800s. Um, the main basilica that I'll show you in a second was first constructed in the year 900, rebuilt again around the year 1000, and finally rebuilt again in the year 1200. Let's go have a look. 